My new definition of codependency is people who don't love themselves as much as they love others consistently in a way that hurts their relationships and them. My new quest in our world is to get women to truly love themselves, not narcissistically, gently, lovingly, like we would a new puppy or a new baby. I mean, to really nurture ourselves into this world on a consistent level instead of regularly turning on ourselves. I had gone through chemical dependency treatment and my burning desire, my goal, my heartfelt passion was to work with other addicts and alcoholics and help them get sober. And so back in the day, that was in the early 70s, uh, there weren't that many women working in treatment helping people. So I worked, I tried and I waited to get a job. I couldn't, I got one being a secretary at a treatment center. And then one day the owner of the treatment center called me aside and said, the only way we can keep our federal funding is if we do something for the families. And I, I, I died inside when she said that, I did. I thought, ah, I'm gonna be dealing with a group of my mom. And I, I just, that was not what my dream was. And I really resisted it, but I said yes, because it was the only job I was being offered. And then a phenomena began once I started doing the family groups. And at that time, it was mostly women in the group because our clients were male clients. But I started seeing my life unraveling before my eyes in their stories, in small ways, sometimes in larger ways, other times, but it, it was just this thing playing out before me. And I did everything I could to run the best group possible. And I discovered there was no information for families. Uh, there was a little bit of al information, but nothing that I could use in that group. And that's, that's what began my quest because I, I began to see that everything the people in my group were going through, I was going through at another level in my own marriage. And it, it wasn't pleasant. I couldn't talk about it in group because that's not appropriate. And furthermore, there weren't any answers back then. So it became my, my burning desire to find answers to this problem. And five years later, I wrote the book. Originally, it was more aimed at people in chemically dependent relationships, people who had become obsessed with another person. Um, but it that's evolved because I believe we've gone deeper. We've gone deeper into ourselves. We've gone deeper into our hearts. We've gone deeper into the heart of the culture. And to me, that has transformed it, that along with cultural worldwide anxiety and trauma. <laughs> In codependency, the only real recovery rule is be still and tune in to yourself. What do you want? What do you, what are you really feeling? Not what do other people want you to feel? What are you really feeling? And so that part of it, we do get to, I wouldn't say indulge ourselves, but at least pay attention to ourselves. And for many of us, that. It can become very painful at first, but I think it's something that it benefits us to lean into, begin leaning into it and find what direction calls to you. Where's your hardest spot? And most people have a similar one. It's setting boundaries. The first step in the healing process is detachment. We cannot work on ourselves. We cannot do anything when we're that obsessed with another human or a situation we cannot control. We're, we're, we're out of control. And so that's a step toward getting our own mind, our psyche, our soul back in moderation. It's a process of realizing that, that number one, we cannot control anything. We can't, we have, we have zero control over other human beings. And when, when we're obsessing about someone, we're actually it's a form of trying to control them or trying to control a situation that we can't. We can ask ourselves, am I worrying about something that's my business? Is this my job to worry about this? Is this my job to do this? Or is this 
my 20 year old son's job to do this is is this my husband's job to do the, to do this we need to sort what our responsibilities are to people and then act and it never ever 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 hurts us to pause before speaking pause collect our thoughts and answer in a called manner if it's at all possible there's so much screaming going out there on out there now there's so much hatred i think it's i know it's so important to keep calm in our homes to keep it peaceful and calm in our homes and that's what detachment is doing it's easing us into being comfortable with reality over time i've noticed that one of the most important things i can do for myself and my own life and that other people can do is have their goals to know where they want to go and to continue moving forward we're either moving forward or we're moving backwards and which way do we want to go we create our life with words and thoughts and the things that we focus on pay attention to and put out there. So if we don't have any goals, we're not focusing on anything, are we? We're just kind of stumbling around like a piece of paper being blown about in the wind. But if we set our sights on something important to us, and it does need to matter to us what we're working toward, a lot greater chance we're going to get there than if we don't identify it, speak it out loud and move toward it in our lives. Many of us emerged into adulthood with somewhat of a victim story. This always happens to me. This this happens every single time. I can't get away from this no matter what I do. It's so important to grab deep into ourselves and pull out that victim story by the roots. Just get it out of there because as long as we're harboring it we'll keep finding ourselves in victimizing situations um it's our job we may have been dealt some raw blows but it's our job to deal with them and then to create our own image of ourselves in our life our own life story to really write our own life story and and cross out us as the victim <laughs>